it's not my third year I've got to do this. Uh, I really do enjoy coming back to see some of my students that I haven't seen for a while, so this is kind of fun for me. Um, these guys have been uh, working on this and their history and literature classes for quite a few months, it sounds like, uh, on and off. Last three months researching injustice around the world, developing possible solutions for those issues. Um, today we have three students that will present. Um, and out of respect for them, we'd ask that we silence your cell phones. I've got mine silenced, but who knows? <laughs> I'm not totally adept with all that. <clears throat> uh, my suggestion is they're going to all three have present because we want to make sure we have enough time. And then at the end, after all three have presented, then they will come forward and we'll have an opportunity to ask questions. <clears throat> so um, my suggestion would be as you listen, feel free to write down questions uh, that you might have. Or these gentlemen when they're finished. Okay, uh, they will introduce themselves to you and their topics. And Cooper, I'm going to go back there and close that door so I don't get distracted. And uh, at that point, we can begin. Justice presentation. My name is Cooper Shield, and I have chosen to research the rhino, rhino poaching in South Africa as my injustice. I have been passionate about animals my whole life, and when I found out hundreds of rhinos are being poached for their horn each year, I wanted to learn more. So, the main issue is the astounding number of rhinos being poached every year. Uh, due to the falsehoods associated with the medical properties of their horn, there has been a large increase in the price today in Asian countries such as Vietnam and China. Uh, in China, rhino horn can be valued as high as 60,000 euros per kilo, uh, giving poachers more of an incentive to keep harming rhinos for their horn. Since 2009, po uh, poaching, since 2009, poaching has been illegal, and shipping rhino horn has been illegal. And the, not only are poachers killing rhinos, but they're also shipping their horn. So how many rhinos are left in South Africa today? South Africa is home to 80% of the world's rhino population, and this shows because there's so many rhino poachings happening in South Africa. And there's only between 17,000 and 19,000 white rhinos left, and between 5,000 and 6,000 black rhinos left. To put this in perspective, there were 70,000 black rhinos in 1970, and that is almost a 65,000 uh, rhinos poached in less in just a couple decades. So most poachings take place in Kruger National Park, where there is 19,485 kilometers protected habitat. And although this is protected habitat, there it is very easy for poachers to kill rhinos here because it is so spread out and there is a limited number of ranger protecting the area. Uh, another, another startling statistic is that we there have been 8,000 rhinos poached in less than a decade and that's a 9,000 percent increase between 2007 and 2014. And this shows that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done for this crisis to be brought to justice. So here's a video of the National Park. Although there are thousands of rhinos living in South Africa, their existence is threatened. Our rhino population in Kruger is endangered because of the high value of the asset for the rhino horn in Southeast Asia. In many Asian countries, rhino horn is held to have healing properties. In China, it can reach up to 60,000 euro per kilo on the black market. On the African continent, the effect of this trade is dramatic. Every day in the Kruger National Park, investigators are out locating and examining slaughtered, dehorned animals. They look for the bullets to trace them back to the weapons and the perpetrators, and they take DNA samples. If it happens that the rhino being recovered somewhere else, it can, with the profiling, we know that this rhino was killed in Kruger on these coordinates. The situation has worsened over the past few years. In 2015, poachers killed 728 rhinos, 
and although this number was reduced in 2016, in the national park there are still on average two rhinos killed every day. There are so many poachers today. We want a really good team that can react at anywhere, day or night, in a helicopter, in a Polaris, on foot, on a bicycle, from a vehicle. Bruce Leslie has worked in the Cooper National Park for 21 years. He heads up a special unit of rangers who track down poachers, arrest them, and <coughs> hand them over to the police. The rangers and their specially trained dogs make up a perfect team. When poachers are spotted, mostly by helicopter patrols, a report is sent back to the control center in Skukuza. The rangers have to act before the poachers can strike. A special vehicle is deployed to get to the reported site. The rangers have to be on their guard, not only against the armed poachers, but also against animals. Okay, uh, so this video gives us a glimpse at the reality of the situation and the brutality poachers are inflicting on the rhino population. Uh, it also shows that rangers are putting their lives on the line to protect rhinos. And it shows that people are determined to stop this issue even if it means uh, risking their lives to do so. And then this is a graph uh, showing poaching related rhino deaths per year in South Africa. And notice that there was only 13 rhinos poached in 2007 and 1,215 in 2014. And luckily the number has gone down today due to more effective <coughs> anti-poaching solutions. And hopefully that number will keep going down in the future. So why do people poach? Poachers are usually very poor and use poaching as their main source of income. Uh, they rely on the sale of rhino horn to support their families. The main reason South Africa is targeted for poachers is due to the poor economy and large amount of rhinos inhabiting the area. Uh, the GDP per capita in South Africa is $6,160, compared to the US's $60,000 GDP per capita. And this shows how poor the economy is and why many people turn to poaching rather than getting jobs. So what is the use of rhino horn? What is rhino horn used for? Uh, rhino horn is mainly used for decorations and carvings such as bowls, plates, chopsticks, and it, many people believe it has medical values that can go anywhere from curing cancer to just helping with overall health. And it is also a status symbol in many Asian countries such as Vietnam and China, and wealthy business elites use it to display a sense of superiority over their competition. So what are some solutions to this crisis? Uh, the first solution that I found was tracking dogs. And the use of tracking dogs has been proven effective and can find poachers in the field. Dogs can find poachers in the field by sniffing them out. They can also be trained to smell rhino horn and find areas where rhino horn is being sort, uh, stored before it is sold to Asian countries before poachers can get the income from that exchange back. And the second solution that is being implemented is the use of drones, and drones can be outfitted with thermal cameras to pick up heat signatures from the air, and if drones find poachers, poachers, rangers and dogs can be deployed on foot to find them in rangers and things like that. And then uh, the third solution is educating the public, and if people in Asian countries can be educated on what poachers do to rhinos to get their horn, maybe it would influence people not to poach rhinos anymore. And the final solution is to stop the export of rhino horn. And if the horn can be confiscated before it is shipped out, there would be no more incentive for poachers to kill the rhinos, and therefore they would not be paid. So. Okay, uh, how can you help? The first way you can help this issue is by donating. All three of these organizations here, Endangered Wildlife Trust, International Rhino Foundation, and Save the Rhino, all have donation boxes set up on their website and your investment would go towards helping ranger accommodations like mattresses, getting blankets, boots, and even tracking devices for rhinos in the field. Uh, the second way you can help is by just spreading the word and something as simple as just wearing a t-shirt and talking to friends and family about this injustice could help bring awareness to it and help stop it. And if you're really feeling inspired after this presentation, you could volunteer 
all of these websites have a page where there's contact information that you can call and try to volunteer and help as much as you can. And then there's my work site page. So anyway, uh, there's my work cited and you can have, if anyone would like to work cited, I have a couple more printed out and yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you.